guys, you're in the gym, killing it, getting a great pump, super workout, last set of the day, boom, pinch nerve. You turn your head like Batman, you can't get back in for a week. What did it? How can we prevent it next time? Let's talk about that and more after the break. What's up, guys? Welcome back. If you're new here, I'm David. I'm a blogger with Fit Thinking. I like to write articles and record videos about fitness, nutrition, finance, and just overall lifestyle optimization with the goal of passing the values and the lessons that I've learned along the way in my 35 years here along to the viewer or the reader so that they can get to their goals faster. Today, we're going to be talking about warm-ups, warming up, and why that is so important and how it can prevent workout injuries in the future. So warming up is lame, right? It sucks. Nobody wants to do it. Everybody gets into the gym all jacked up. You got your pre-workout. You got your tingly skin. You're, you're, you're shaking. You're ready. And you don't want to come in here and do some bands for rotator cuff. You don't want to come in here and do some stretches. You want to push around heavy things. I get it, but you need to do the warm-up. And the warm-up that I'm talking about here isn't those bands. And it's not the stretching. I'm talking about weightlifting warm-up. Have you ever noticed that some of these really big guys, these jack dudes, these these monsters in the gym, right? Like these guys live there. You've seen them out here, maybe just lifting some lighter weight and you're thinking, what is going on here? Like, I could have lifted that three years ago. Why are they lifting that? Warm up. Without warm up, those muscles are significantly stiffer and more prone to strain and injury. Biggest thing to take away here is that injuries pull you away from your goal. They take valuable time from your training and your efforts to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So the best way to avoid being pulled out, and the best way to meet your goals is to not be pulled away from the efforts going towards those goals. And that's why I really want to bring more awareness to the importance of working out as someone who's been pulled out way too many times before I figured out the right way to do it. And what you really wanna do is do this warm up on the first exercise of any major body part that you're working out. If you're working out one body part, say chest, and you're working out a five day, five day circuit uh, every week, you go ahead and on the first bench press or the first incline bench press, whatever your first major exercise is, go ahead and start off with lighter weight and then get progressively heavier. So the question here is then, all right, well, you said start off light. I mean, that's pretty generic, right? So what we really wanna focus on is doing a percentage of your target weight. Now, your target weight is where you should be focusing your 100% effort at in order to maximize your strength gain. I can speak to this. I've heard these guys talking about 12 reps or one rep or you know three reps, whatever that is. My personal experience and the way that I've seen the most significant strength gain in the quickest amount of time is to focus on four to six reps. Once you get to six reps, you drop that set back down and then you, you push back to four to six. So set one, when you're doing your warm up, you wanna do 10 slow and steady reps at 50% of your target weight. So you really just wanna make sure you're focusing on the form, warming your body up. Set two, you wanna do 10 slightly faster steady reps at also 50% of your target weight. Same weight, you're just making sure that you're picking up the pace a little bit. Set three is gonna be four slow and steady reps at 75% of that target weight. And then once you're done with this, you're done with your workout for that body group. Then you go ahead and, and continue on. If you're doing three sets of, of each exercise, you go ahead and push out at that 100% target weight, aiming for four to six reps. Following that, for every single workout since I've been doing it has completely, completely eliminated any injuries that I've gotten. No pinched nerves, no torn ligaments, nor no, no strained rotator cuffs, nothing. I have been golden and I'm hitting my goals and I'm hitting them so much faster because I'm paying attention to doing it right. As I'm getting older, I, I get hurt pretty easily. So I really need to pay attention. And as you get older, if you're one of these younger viewers, you need to pay attention to that because it'll catch you off guard and you'll be out. So biggest thing about this is forget about impressing everyone at the gym and focus on your form. On top of the warming up, form is everything. And it's hard to focus on that. It's hard to focus on that when you're so focused on impressing other people. I get it, I get it. It, you're in the gym and you're with your buddies and you want to show off and they're spotting you and you're just like, I can get one more and they're shouting, get one more. And you're like, yeah, I can do it. Know your limits and focus on the form. If you're doing bench and you come down to your chest and the last rep, you're scared to get down, get it up and don't push it. Um, make sure you're getting all the way down to your chest. If you're doing something like deadlifts and you feel your back arching, drop it. 
drop it. I've herniated a disc, worst pain I've ever felt in my life. You don't want it. Drop that weight and make sure you can keep your back straight. Don't be like, don't be like a cat that's scared. Uh, and you got the arch back, you're gonna pay for it. So people are typically focused on themselves at the gym. And I know that when you go into the gym, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you're scoping out your pump, you really feel like your center of attention. Everyone else feels like they're the center of attention too. And they're all in their own little world, their own little bubble paying attention to themselves. You don't need to worry about impressing anybody that's looking around, nor do you need to worry about impressing that hot girl that's all the way over there. And hopefully you're looking at least three mirrors through before you're looking at her. She knows. Um, but no, you don't need to worry about anybody. You focus on yourself, focus on the form, and then you'll get the results in the body that you want without the shortcomings of being pulled out of the gym. So I really wanna kinda of take a second and outline the injuries that I have encountered. I strained my rotator cuff, and this was hilarious. So my, my buddy, Scotty, uh, we were in the gym and it was on, on an incline bench press, and I was, I was pretty strong at that time. I was back when I was like 24, 25, and I was putting up 275, and that was a, a one rep max, and I was in the mentality of gotta push it, gotta show off, uh, and I got the weight down, and that's it. And my buddy Scott, he, he was like, well, at least you got the weight down. Like I had a choice, right? And so that's something that's, that's never ever going to not be funny to me in retrospect, but oh my God, I thought I tore it. I thought I tore my rotator cuff. I was out for at least two weeks and I, could, I couldn't lift my arm above my head. It was terrifying. And I didn't know what was gonna happen with that. Well, thankfully I didn't need surgery, but I very well could have because I was pushing it so hard, pushing myself beyond my limits. I herniated a disc in my lower back. And that was the absolute worst pain I have ever felt in my life, ever, ever. Um, I was doing deadlifts in my, in my home gym back here and I work out at 5 a.m. I'm an early guy, uh, I got three kids, I need to maximize my time. And so I get out here at 5 a.m. I come down here, take my pre-workout, get a solid workout in and get ready for the day. Problem with that is you can't be too loud. Otherwise you wake everybody up and not only are they unpleasant and unhappy, then your workout's shut. So you need to really be conscious of the noise. Well, I was deadlifting and I don't even remember what the weight was. I was trying to set it down gently. Nope, don't do it. There's a reason that everybody makes noise when they're dropping the deadlift weight. Yes. And that's because on the way down, your back is very vulnerable, very vulnerable to injury. And on the way down, I herniated a disc in my lower back and I, I, I almost couldn't see. It was so, so bad. Um, had to go to the doctor. Nothing could be done. They couldn't operate on it. They didn't need to, but they also told me that, you know, there, there may not be lifting like that in the future. And I can do some deadlifts. I don't. I don't push it. I did for a little while and I felt a lot of tenderness and my body was screaming at me, stop, stop, stop. Thankfully, this time I listened. So now I'm, I'm paying attention to it. And when I do squats, I think form, form, form. When I'm doing bent over rows with a barbell, I think form, form, form. And I take the time and I make sure that I do it right so that I don't have that unbelievable degree of pain again. And the other injury that I've got a picture for you right here, I tore my meniscus and it was terrible. Not as bad as the herniated disc, but it was terrible. Um, I was squatting 185 ass to grass. I was, it was gosh, 20, 2014 and I was going full range of motion. I was doing 185, which at the time was more of a warm up weight for me. And I wasn't paying attention to form. I was bouncing off my heels, bouncing. What an idiot I was to be bouncing with 185 pounds on my shoulders. And on like the third or fourth rep through my headphones, which were blaring August burns red, real loud, real intense. I heard a rubber band snap. I heard it and I felt something off in my knee. And I got the weight up, adrenaline really helped with that. And then I kind of limped over and I called my now wife and I was like, I think I need to go to the hospital. And yep, it was a torn meniscus and I didn't get it operated on until 2017. I waited three years because of some work stuff and I didn't want to be working and going through training with a crutch. So I went ahead and dealt with it. And the picture really outlines the after effects of that surgery and all that pooling is not necessarily painful blood, it's bruising from a, a surgery, but they had to cut out a part of my meniscus and it was, it was very painful. So now I am finally able to work out legs. I'm finally able to work out my lower back. 
But that was 2017 when I had that surgery, 2014 when I had the injury. And just now I'm finally getting myself to feel comfortable with building up the muscle around it to where I can push now. I'm at 205 squatting and I am over the moon about it because I haven't done that in so many years. But I have to be careful and I have so many sets of warm up before I let myself push it. And then on top of that, I have knee wraps, super tight knee wraps to give me the support because I'm not messing around. Now that we're past that, I just really want to focus on telling you how can you actually find out what the proper form is for the exercises you're doing, especially if you're newer. You, you just kind of watch these guys. You don't know what to feel for. You don't have the experience to know what your body's saying and how to tweak the muscles to get the activation that you want. Look at the videos online. Look up the exercises you want. If you downloaded a workout plan, make sure you use that, that site's resource for those videos. If it's just a generic online workout plan, make sure you look up the videos on YouTube to, to know exactly what you're supposed to be doing going into it. Once again, it may seem silly and it's a bit of a time investment up front, but you will be so thankful when you're not pulled out of the gym and in a lot of pain, maybe never working out again, especially if you're, if you're early on in your fitness journey, because this just sucks and it's dangerous. It doesn't have to be, you have to do it the right way. All right, guys, wrapping up got four steps I want you to follow to avoid any workout injuries going forward. Step one, warm up every day you work out. Doesn't matter what day it is, make sure you do those warm ups for the first exercise of every major muscle group you work out that day. Step two, warm up correctly. Make sure you do it the right way and do three sets for that first exercise for each major muscle group. Set one, do 50% of your target weight for 10 slow and steady reps. Set two, also do 50% of your target weight, but a little bit faster, steady reps. And then set three, do four slow and steady reps at 75% of your target weight before then moving on to your regular sets for the workout. Step three, focus on form above all else. It sounds slow, it sounds boring, make sure you do it right from the outset and focus on the form to avoid injuries. And then lastly, step four, Listen to your body. If it's telling you, slow down, stop, come back tomorrow, do it. Listen to your body, respect it, trust it. You'll be so thankful that you did and your body will be happy you did too by giving you exactly what you want and meeting those goals and giving you the body and physique that you want. All right, so that's it for today, guys. What'd you think? Uh, injuries that you've had, share them in the comments. Uh, techniques that you found success with, share them in the comments. Throw me a like, throw me a subscribe, smash that notification bell. If you like it, let me know. Uh, we'll be back again next week. See ya.